My next guest is Professor Eric Kaufman, who faced calls to be cancelled from students and other staff members when he was Professor of Politics at Birkbeck, the University of London, where his research focused on immigration, nationalism and religion. Professor Kaufman has now decided to start a course at the University of Buckingham, which he is calling a Faculty of Common Sense. The Centre for Heterodox Social Science will offer a 15-week online course about woke ideology. Professor Eric Kaufman joins me now. Welcome to the show. Great to be here. Firstly, what do you mean by woke ideology? Because there's a lot of confusion around the term. Right. I always say woke, one sentence, it's making sacred of historically marginalized race, gender, and sexual minority groups. That right. is woke in a sentence. And so once you buy into that, anything that might offend the most sensitive hypothetical member of any of these groups becomes cause for blasphemy. Yes. And you must be excommunicated. Well, it also has an authoritarian component, which is that those who do cross the line have to be shut down and silenced rather than argued with, I suppose. It, of course, because they've committed blasphemy and yes. therefore they must be just excommunicated. And you've had direct experience of this and, you know, I've spoken to a number of academics who do tell me that the situation is worse than people even imagine. Is that right? Yes, it is right. I mean, higher education in the West, including Britain, is is heavily corrupted by yes. woke ideology. And that can take a number of different forms. It, it seeps into the administration, but more particularly into the kind of peer pressures over what you're allowed to research, what perspectives you're allowed to hold on those research. So if we're talking about a race or gender gap, that can only be explained by discrimination. Right. And, and if you can't identify it, it's structural discrimination. But what, of course, that means is we're not necessarily getting at the truth. Right. Uh, what are the real reasons why there might be a gap, which might be interesting, and we might be able to fix that. Well, that's interesting, because yeah. when you had the CRED report, the, commi yeah. the Committee on Race and Ethnic Disparity, and they found no evidence of structural racism within, say, the education system, they were accused of being racist for denying the truth of structural racism. Right, so if you are anti anyone who wears the label anti-racist or anti-trans, whatever, or pro-trans, sorry, then you become immediately labelled as a racist or a transphobe or whatever. And so that is the sort of way this game is played. But how can that work in terms of academic freedom? Because if you can't study something honestly and objectively without being branded hateful, right. it kind of limits the scope of what higher education can achieve. Exactly. So the sort of truth-seeking mission of academia, both in research and teaching, is being systematically corrupted by these red lines that are being set up by woke ideology. So you're not allowed to step. So an, an example, or it might be just very difficult, an example might be, you know, there have been many papers that look at uh, discrimina discrimination against women in academia, mm -hmm. academic publishing, whatever. You know, one study found some anti-female female discrimination, and most of the studies find either anti-male or no discrimination. The, right. the one study, which is quite low-powered, that fi found discrimination against women has been cited vastly more than any of the others. And that's, again, what I mean about the skewing, of the systematic skewing of this perspective. And if you want to be promoted, published, etc., you just avoid taking an unpopular stance. But you didn't, did you? No. And, and it's a bit like, you know, GB News sort of forging against the grain of the existing ecosystem. Yes. I mean, 181 institutions in Britain. University of Buckingham is the only one that elevates academic freedom above, say, social justice and all other values. And so that is the only place. It's a small institution, but it's the only place that can be independent and a free university. People will be surprised at that, yeah. though. The, the idea that, f from what you're saying, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, that, that, that universities are effectively captured ideologically and are passing that on to students, which is not really what they're there for, is it? No, I mean, they should be truth-seeking institutions, but they are morphing into social justice first institutions. So we'll do truth as long as it doesn't bump into social justice, in which case we're going to put truth back in its place, right? So, so that's... So what will you be doing then? At the University of Buckingham, you've got this new faculty. What, what's, what's the deal there? Yeah, there's a couple of things going on. First, this 15-week online course on Woke, which anybody in the world can take. Yes. Um, so that's the one thing we're starting in well, January. Well, they can do it online as well? They can do it online. It's fully online. Um, and so if you go to my Twitter, you can see the sign up. Then I'm going to be doing uh, a launching this new research institute, which is going to be called the Center for Heterodox Social Science. So we're just going to pursue the truth. We're going to try and make up for all those lines of inquiry that have been shut down. Right. And so we want to actually just reorient. We're happy to have counter arguments, but we want to have all of the arguments put onto the table so that we can evaluate them scientifically. Well, I mean, it sounds like a great endeavor. You must be looking forward to it. Very much so. I mean, I've kind of been looking forward to this freedom for a long time, you yes. know, and so it's really kind of nice to be able to do it and actually just to say, let's put this out there. It's going to sort of hopefully uh, help to, I won't say revive academia, but at least inject a little more diversity into it. Absolutely. Eric Kaufman, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you.